everyone, Brody here with our channel Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. I have a new copy of Maps of Mystera. It's a tile placement game with a very unique idea that players play as cartographers exploring an island, but each player might see this island differently than, you know, the other players. Players want to form the island so it appears closest to their goals, but they also want to try to match their own personal parchment board, their own player board, to match the main board as much as possible. The game plays in an hour or so, can be played with one to four players, and is published by Sit Down Games. So, here's the game setup. Players will start on the shore and need to perform actions to explore the island. Your turn is divided into two half days where you move, and then you choose a sketch card, and then you choose to map or claim. Then again, move, draw a sketch card, and then map or claim. At the beginning of the game, you will use your movement to move on to the beach spaces, but let me set up the board as if you've been playing this game for a little bit so that you're not on the beach anymore. When moving, cartographer meeples can be placed on the same place. Movement is done orthogonally adjacent, not diagonal, and movement is done one space at a time on the spaces of the island board. You can be on a beach space on the shore or a space occupied by a terrain tile, but never an empty space on the board. Each type of terrain, no matter the side showing, if it is the hazy side or the confirmed side, has its own effect when your cartographer is on it. The step terrain, which is unforested grassland, allows you to immediately move your cartographer meeple to an adjacent space, triggering the effect of that new space as well. This terrain type will help you with your movement. The lagoon terrain allows you to discard a sketch card from the display by placing it under the deck and then draw a new one to replace it with. Then you can choose your sketch card for this half day action. This terrain type helps you get certain sketch cards that you might want or need. The jungle terrain is the only mandatory effect and it prevents a player to map while on that type of terrain. Their only option is to claim or do nothing. The mountain effect will allow that cartographer to see one space further orthogonally, thus making more options when placing a sketch card. This effect helps when performing the map action, which, you know, I will start explaining now. Again, you will move, then choose a sketch card from the ones available, then place that card on your parchment board. It has to be placed to cover two spaces. Half of the card needs to be placed so that your cartographer sees it. There are five spaces your cartographer can actually see, which is the space that you're on, and then the space above, below, to the left, and to the right. Unless, of course, you are on a mountain tile, which extends those directions. You will then place that card on an empty space or covering cards already on your board. There is no limit to how many cards you can stack on each other. This arrangement on your board will most likely be different than what's shown on the island board. After placing the sketch card on your parchment board, you must update the corresponding two spaces on the island board. If the space is empty, you will place a terrain tile matching the sketch card and it will be placed on the hazy side. If the island space already contains a terrain tile that has its hazy side up, if it matches the space on the sketch card, the tile is flipped over from the hazy side to the confirmed side. If the island space already contains a terrain tile with a hazy side and the sketch card differs from the terrain type there, then it is replaced with the new one matching the new sketch card, placing it on its hazy side up. If the island space already contains a terrain tile with the confirmed side up, then nothing happens, as a tile whose confirmed side is up can never be replaced. So really, to confirm a terrain tile on the island board, its space must be mapped identically twice without someone else changing it, either by the same player or by two different players. If you have not yet performed the map action on your half turn, then you can instead perform the claim action in your cartographer's region. The region I'm referring to is orthogonally contiguous groups of terrain tiles of the same type, where at least one of those tiles are confirmed. And a tile on its own that is confirmed also counts as a region. So to claim, you will discard the sketch card that you chose that turn. You will place one of your remaining claim markers on your cartographer meeple's space. Your meeple must be on a confirmed tile in order to do the claim action. Each region that you claim must be a different type, meaning that you can't claim two different regions that are, say, mountain terrain. 
You cannot claim a region that someone has already claimed, and each player can only claim a total of three regions, and once the claim marker is placed down, it cannot be moved again. So really, when you claim a region, you will start to try to grow that region to score more points doing so. Again, on your turn, you'll perform two half days. So move, choose a sketch card, then map or claim. Then again, move, claim a sketch card, and then map or claim. So at the end of your turn, there will be only three sketch cards on display. And at this time, two are revealed and placed out for the next player in clockwise order to perform their turn. Players continue taking turns trying to record what type of terrain is or should be seen on this island, and the game end is triggered when one of three different conditions are met. First, if all spaces on the island board are all confirmed terrain, then the game ends. Second, if there are no more sketch cards available, then the game ends. Or, if a player has covered all the spaces on their parchment board, then the game ends. In each scenario, the current round is finished and the players count up their points. Before counting points, players will remove all terrain tiles that are on the hazy side from the board and any claim markers that share their region with another claim marker. Both of those are removed and neither of those players earn points. Then players score two points for each parchment space containing the same type of terrain as the island board in each space. Players score negative one points for each empty space on their parchment board. Players check their presumption cards and will score points listed on those cards according to their player board regardless of what's shown on the main board compared to each player's board. Lastly, each region where you have a claim marker will score two points for each tile for each region. The player then with the highest score wins the game. In the Master Cartographer variant, you can also add in more points for completing a row or a column exactly like it's shown on the main board to gain three points for each row or column, doing it that way. And, well, that's Maps of Mystera. Now, just don't forget that when you map, you are under no obligation to respect the actual terrains visible on the island board. Don't forget when you do not map, you must choose a sketch card from the display to discard. Your presumption cards are only concerned about your own parchment board and not the island board. And before you do the final scoring, remember to remove any hazy terrain tiles from the board. And now there's really a lot of things to like about this game. I like how the terrain type has its own rules. I will say the jungle does get a little bit annoying, but I guess you got to have something negative, which is fine. It just isn't great when your personal goals or even the public goals involve a lot of jungle. It's a very interesting concept for a game, and that's what I ultimately really like the most about this game. Everyone is trying to see the island differently, but once a terrain is confirmed, then, you know, it's permanent. But that's on the map. On your own personal board, it might be a little bit different, which is fine as well because you have some goals that you want to score and it only matters for what's on your personal goal and on your personal board for that goal. The game rewards those who are really good at planning out their turns and where you move on the map will help you with what you're trying to do. So players need to try to be the most efficient in their movements and with their actions and how they go about exploring the island. But no other players will come behind you and possibly change some of the things that you do. So sometimes you just have to deal with, you know, some of those things in the games. There are changes as you try to make things that how you want them. Ultimately, I appreciate the unique feel the game gives. It's a little brain teaser. Now, is it a perfect game? Well, no, but it works very well and has something and causes something that most other games don't. Again, this is Brody with Lit's Table, where we get games to the table. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We are new and working hard to bring to you videos like this one so that you know if these games are ones that you want to get to your own table.